Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let me show you how to take a screenshot and annotate it. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So using tools built into macOS it's easy to take a screenshot and then mark it up. The keyboard shortcuts for taking a screenshot can be found in System Preferences under Keyboard and then Shortcuts. Click on Screenshots and you'll see all of the options. Now the main option is the last one here. You can use that to set things up and then use the other ones to get to a screenshot quicker after that. But I just prefer to use Shift Command 5 in all situations. So let's have some content here on the screen and I'm going to take a screenshot. I'm going to use Command Shift 5 to bring up the tools here at the bottom that allow me to take a screenshot. Now only the first three items here are for a screenshot. These two are for recordings. You want to check the options first. So under Options you can see where the screenshot is saved to. A good place to save it is to the desktop and that way you can easily drag and drop it into the proper folder afterwards or attach it to an email, include it in a message or whatever you want to do with it. Now at the bottom you should check Show Floating Thumbnail because that's going to give us easy access to the markup tools. You can also choose Show Mouse Pointer if you want the pointer to be included. And remember Last Selection is useful if you're always capturing a portion of the screen. It will start off with the same selection as last time. Now you have to choose from these three tools here. You can choose Capture Entire Screen, Select a Single Window to Capture, or a Selected Portion. Very often people capture a selected portion and capture too little of the screen. So many times I get screenshots while trying to help people and they're not showing me enough. I'm missing some context and I have to ask them for a larger screenshot. So when in doubt just capture the entire screen. But if you know what you're doing capture the selected portion. I'll select that and you can see here I can adjust the edges and corners or grab in the middle to select an area I want. So let's say I want to select this area right here and once I'm ready I can click Capture here or just use Return and it will capture. Then I get a thumbnail at the bottom. I'm going to click that before it goes away. It will go away after a few seconds and just save the screen capture wherever you set it to save to like the desktop and you don't get a chance to mark it up. At least not right then. But if I click on it it goes right into a mode where I've got markup tools. So now I can annotate the screenshot. The tools here at the top are pretty self-explanatory. The first one here allows you to draw. So I'm going to circle something and it will actually give me two modes. You can see the two modes right here. One is to take literally what I drew. The other is to use that as an estimation of a shape. If I choose this tool then I'm just drawing freehand. This tool allows me to choose a shape. So I could choose a circle here for instance and it puts a circle there. I can then drag it and move it around resize it very easily. I could also select a line or an arrow which is very useful. And whenever you select one of these tools you could go to these settings here to change some things about it. Like for instance the line shape. So I can make it thicker. I can change arrows to have the arrow on the other side or both sides. I can choose here to change the line color which with an arrow that's all you've got. So I can make it red for instance. But if this was something like a circle or square I could change the color of the line there. But here is where I would set the fill color. Now any shape allows you to type in it. So I could double click inside here and type something. And once I have text I could select it, Command A, and I could change the font size, the color, and other properties. This is particularly useful if you're using something like this bubble right here. You can write some text in here and then you can drag this green dot here and have it point to something. If you want to highlight something you also have two other tools here. One is this one which will gray out everything except a box there. It's a little tricky to use because if you want to drag it you actually drag the gray area like that. But you can use this to highlight something while not completely removing the things outside. You could also choose this tool which is a magnifier. So it gives you a little circle and you can click and drag the blue dot to make the circle larger and click and drag the green dot to change the magnification. So you can just magnify it a little bit. And if you want you can also just click here to add text all by itself. 
restyle that, change its color, move it to wherever you want. And you can even add a background color to this. So if the text doesn't stand out enough you can make it just a plain color behind it. And if you want you can also crop the screenshot here which is even more of a reason to use the full screen screenshot because you can then crop it after the fact removing a little bit from it like that. While you're working with any of this you can click and select something to move it around or change it or just use the delete key to get rid of it. If you want to add multiple things like multiple arrows here you could always copy and paste and get another one or you can hold the Option key down and drag to drag out a duplicate from the original. If you want to start over again you can click Revert to get rid of everything. Clicking Done will just put this screenshot with the markings that you've added in the place where you had it set before so like to your desktop or directly to mail or messages or something like that. You can also click the trash can here to just delete the screenshot and then you can start again. Or if you want you can bypass wherever it was supposed to save and click here and share it somewhere else. So you may have originally had it set to go to desktop but now I can click here and have it go to an email message or to notes. So I'll click Done and now you can see it appears here and it's just a regular image here. If I were to double click it it would open up in preview but you can see I can't change these markings here. They're permanently a part of this. I would definitely recommend renaming the screenshot to make it something that you can easily search for later or something that makes sense to whoever it is you're sending it to. So here are a few more tips. What if you want to take a screenshot that seems kind of impossible. Like for instance say I want to show this menu here and if I hold the Option key down you can see how things change. So what if I want to capture that. Well if I were to use the Option key here and do Shift Command 5 I can't initiate the screenshot because the Option key is held down. If I release the Option key you could see I don't now have the things that appear when I'm holding the Option key. So what you would do in a situation like that is you would do Shift Command 5, go to Options and set a timer. Now I can use Shift Command 5. I could do Capture and it's going to count down. So now I could bring up this menu, hold the Option key down and when the screenshot is taken you could see it looks like I want it to look. Let me take this screenshot and say I want it to go directly to a mail message. So I'll Capture and it's going to open up Mail. Now in this case it didn't give me the chance to annotate it. But I can still annotate it right here in Mail. If I move my pointer over it you can see I can click here and then click Markup and then I get the same markup tools here. So I can still mark it up before sending it. Another thing I want to show you is image size. So all too often people have set small as their image size which makes sense when sending photos. You want to send a cute little photo and you don't want to send a huge file. That's fine. But when you set it to small it's going to compress this and the person receiving it may not actually be able to make out what's going on because it's too small. So before sending a screenshot always check image size here and make sure it's set large enough. In a lot of cases actual size is what you want. If you set the options to go to preview it will take the screenshot and open it up in preview. So I'll capture here and you can see it opens up in preview. And in preview you've got the same markup tools here. And the great thing is it's now just an untitled document. So instead of ending up with this weird file name saved to my desktop I now can mark it up and now when I go to Save I can choose where I want it to save. I can choose the file name. I can also choose a format here and change the quality of it. So for instance if I want to save a nice compressed screenshot I can do so here as JPEG and bring the compression down to make a nice small file size. So if you do this a lot you may want to set up your workflow to always go directly to Preview and that way you get to name, place, and compress your screenshots every time. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.